This is Women's Tech Radio, a show on the Jupiter Broadcasting Network interviewing interesting women in technology, exploring their roles and how they are successful in technology careers. I'm Paige. And I'm Angela. And today, Paige, I want to know what your favorite meme is. Oh, that's so hard. There's so many. I know. Well, okay, just like one that, that comes to your mind. Yeah, so I mean, I've always been a huge fan of the cat picture stuff and all that jazz, but really the one that always stuck with me is the blank all the things is like totally my favorite, like, you know, code all the things, right? all the things, definitely. You know, my business card says that I'm manager of all the things, right? I did not. Yeah, in all caps, uh, all the things. All the things. Yeah. So, I love it. <laughs> but thankfully that is not the meme that, that I had in my Ooh, brain. Yeah, close. right? Yeah, but it, I do use that a lot. I mean, it's on my business card. Yeah, no, it really <laughs> is my favorite, so. Mine is, I accidentally the whole thing. Yes. Do you know the meme, the story behind that one? I don't. Know. It started with Coca Cola, I think, or Pepsi. Oh gosh, I wish I knew. I think it's Coke. Anyway, somebody was doing the online chat, uh, customer service thing, mm-hmm. and they're like, "I accidentally the whole Coke bottle," oh. and the person's like, "You accidentally did what?" And they're like, "The whole Coke bottle." <laughs> yeah, but what did you do to the co- whole Coke bottle? And it was just yeah. like on and on and on about this. So anyway, <laughs> like it is, it is, it is so my meme that it is. Uh, inscribed mm-hmm. inscribed on the back of my first iPad uh, engraved engraved yes, yes. it's engraved on the back of my first iPad that I got like you know I the whole four thing. or five years ago I, I accidentally, accidentally the, the whole thing. thing yeah I like that and my social network plurk uh it's my like subtitle oh yeah in fact I might make that my new Twitter you should I accidentally you the should. whole thing that's really funny that's very much one of my favorite things is I read this book uh many years ago and it had this character in it that was a talking teddy bear don't ask why um I don't like Ted <laughs> Um, but the the trope for the teddy bear was that he would say that's as good as, or that's as something as, and just stop, ah, and never finish. That's hilarious. Yeah. You want to know something really funny? Yeah. I changed my Twitter blurb mm-hmm. after we had a conversation last month oh. about how it should be more interesting, and it says, "I do all the things." All the things. <laughs> this is so what I'm is. saying. All right. <laughs> Today we interviewed Katarina Pond. She is a. Um, a freelancer who lives in the Portland area and works with me on Women Who Code. And we talk about her journey getting a computer science degree and um, in a kind of non-traditional way and all the journeys that she has had in tech and the tools that she uses to do it. And before we get to that, I want to mention that Women's Tech Radio will be at Linux Fest Northwest. And one way that you can support that and also get something for yourself is to go to teespring.com forward slash Linux because it is Linux Fest Northwest, but we will be there and we will be pulling women off the floor to hopefully interview them and share some of that uh, awesome experience with you guys. It's a live thing and it should be really fun. Yeah. And Come if- by, say hi, or if you'd like to just support us and you can't make it, you know, check out the Teespring campaign and the shirts are great. And I have one of the hoodies and it is so comfy. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yep. yep. So, and that is one way that you can support the network that brings you Women's Tech Radio. Awesome. And our first question with Katarina today was just to ask to give us a bit of an overview of what she's doing in technology now. So I'm mostly a front-end developer doing front-end work, so a lot of JavaScript, HTML, CSS. And then I'm also working as a product consultant. Kind of how did you get into this? Like, do you have a traditional path? Were you a computer science major? Um, Tell us a little bit of a story about how you got started in tech. Yeah, so traditional in that I do have a computer science degree. And right after college, I went to work for a huge tech company. Um, But not so traditional in that I really... I I really wasn't thinking about this when I started college. I wasn't thinking about doing this when I was in high school. I was actually a chemistry major my freshman year of college. And I realized I wanted to do something different, tried out a couple of different majors. And it wasn't until junior year that I actually took my first computer science class. And so I spent, I wasn't in college for an extra year to finish my computer science degree. And I was really lucky in that I didn't really have to find an internship. I didn't really have to find a job. It just kind of all came to me. And my university was really good about setting us up with different companies. I had a pretty easy road to... What about what was it about that first computer science course that really kind of like caught your attention and made you say like, oh, this is actually the major for me. Like, you know, chemistry had lost your interest. A couple other things had lost your interest. But comp sci, like what, what about it grabbed you? 
Um, I really liked it. I had always been like very into math and I really liked solving problems. So, but math, I guess just like didn't, I didn't really see exactly where I would go with it. And I considered that as a major briefly, but probably, but I wasn't very serious about it. And it just, so it was a huge class. Computer Science 101 is a huge class and it's actually a requirement. Um, my college, USC, um, it's a requirement for, I think, most engineering majors. And so that means that a lot of people who like major in aerospace and um, industrial systems and all that, and who are probably never going to take a computer science class, take that class. And so what that did is I just, I was able to do everything. I liked doing every single programming exercise. And I was also really good at it compared to most of the class. And so I also felt really good about that. But of course, that was partly because a lot of people will never, like a lot of the other students in that class were not really going to do more computer science classes. So yeah, I just I felt really good about myself in that class. <laughs> Had you been like a, a tech kid growing up? Like, were you kind of one of those people who like built HTML pages at home? Or like, were you into video games or anything like that? Or was this kind of like surprising to you in that aspect too? I was like a little bit, but very, but definitely not like everyone else. I mean, I feel like, you know, like as I started to get to know more computer science students, I realized a lot of them like just skip computer science 101 because they obviously like knew all of that before even arriving. And I was like, oh, I'm behind in that regard. So I really like playing around with stuff. Um, and I was a little bit into video games, but certainly not to the same level as other people. But yeah, I like technology. I always did. I have a question for you. Um, what was your, what, which meme did you prefer? The llamas or the dress? <laughs> the llamas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good call. I agree. <laughs> I didn't uh, understand what was happening with the dress. <laughs> yeah. I ask you that because I see on your Twitter page that you retweeted uh, the internet summed up <laughs> in one photo and it's the llamas one striped with blue and one striped with gold and, and it is hilarious. And uh, I, I was quite amused by the whole thing as well. Yeah. Well, every now and again, I don't, I'm not, I tweet every now and again, but sometimes I feel like there's just really top notch content on Twitter. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I have to retweet it. Yep. Oh, that's great. And I, so I know that you're involved a lot in um in kind of the what I like to think of as the meat space of technology is that you're very involved with meetups. Um you know that's how we met. Um and I know that you kind of come out of some of that. Can you tell me like some about like that and why that's important to you and why you're so invested in that space? Yeah. So after college I joined Cisco. And I was there for almost three and a half years. Um, I worked on three different teams and I was, for the majority of those three and a half years, I was the only female engineer on the teams I worked on. And so to an extent, I feel like I was very, my college graduating class was 25% um, female. And I just assumed that's what it was. And then I got to work and the percentage was worse. And again, I just assumed that's what it was. I didn't sit to question it. I didn't, I just, I was like, well, I guess women are just not majoring in computer science. So then they're not engineers. And I feel like when I started working, it was June, 2009. And I didn't know about Meetup back then. I don't even know if it was available. Um, I found out about Meetup and I started going to like, you know, an event there and then like something like three months later. And some of it was technical. It took me quite a while. I feel like it took me a year to really understand, to really go to some great meetups and understand that there are so many women working in different tech careers um, and just to make those connections. And so um, I felt like I had to get involved with that. You know, these events need to happen. And I really enjoyed it. I honestly, I feel like I went... This is certainly not the first meetup I went to, but maybe like the fourth or fifth. It was a Bay girl geek dinner and there were just all these female developers. And I was like, oh my God, I had no idea that there could be, you know, like 200 females, developers, designers, 
PMs in one room in San Francisco ever. So that's kind of when I really started to get more involved with it. And someone I knew through some friends was doing a lot of workshops to teach women basic web development skills. And I started getting involved with that, TAing. And then I just kind of got a little bit more involved over the years. And now I'm actually just organized a meetup yesterday and it was amazing. We'll do we'll do a little disclosure here is that Katarina works with me on Women Who Code Portland. And she has recently launched an awesome night of tech talks and networking. And um, I'm excited to see where that goes. And you know, her passion has been awesome and helpful. And like, I, I, I agree. I think that meetup, that, that physical space of getting in the same room, like filled with other people, and, and in this case, other women who are doing what you're doing, it just makes everything seem possible. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's also about, um, you know, talking to other women and seeing what their trajectory is like. And and also seeing um, and hearing that you've struggled with some of the same issues. And it just, I don't know, I find that so incredibly helpful yeah, um, and reassuring that I'm not the only person, you know, having... Yeah, yeah, especially in our in our career where it's so easy to sit behind a desk, behind a computer monitor and and get caught up in this headspace, you know, be it gendered or not that like you're the only one there, you're the only one struggling with this and you know every time I go to Stack Overflow, I feel like a noob for asking some question again, but right. you know, yeah. like but then I go to a meetup and and I get to be like, "Hey, you know, I've been having a lot of trouble like figuring out authentication in Angular." And like five other people are like, "Oh my god, me too." And and like it's a really different experience. Yeah, I think I was thinking about it as she was describing her situation with being in a room with 200 women. And then again, with what you were just saying, I, I, I'm not saying that, that guys aren't compassionate, but there's something about being with other women and just knowing that they're going to have compassion for the path that you're on. Mm-hmm. And right. it's just, it is very comforting. Yeah, totally, totally. So you're involved with a bunch of meetups. Um, what's your favorite favorite thing to, to go and meet up about? Like, do you like the happy hour or do you like the like tech talks or a workshop or? I like the tech talk. I feel like I just learn something new. And then I meet some people doing something completely new. I don't actually like the happy hours because I feel like it's just like a socializing. It's just like a socializing hour. And I feel like you... I'm not necessarily (laughs) looking to make friends at a networking event. Um, I'm more looking to network and I feel like, and learn and yeah. I I kind of agree. I like, um, I only like happy hour events if they're really themed. And so they have this kind of like, you know, they hit that group dynamic thing of like storming, forming and norming where we're like all getting together. We're talking about something specific, like the tables might have question cards and like kind of that social lubricant that's not just alcohol to like, get me involved with the other women and, and show what I'm passionate about because you know there's something that everybody's passionate about and that's the most exciting part about them and I think especially if we're all meeting up about tech like we've all got tech passions and like sharing those and learning together is just like amazing yeah no that's totally true actually one of the best meetups I went to is, uh, is over beer um, but it's not like a central point of it and so it's really um, the meetup is hackers and founders and it's really about discussing founder issues and um and yeah, there's just like some beer there, but it's in the background. So one of the things I like to ask is, can you tell me a little bit about um, like a tool that you use? You know, we like to share either something that's helped you learn as you broadened your career or something that you're using daily now, just so that we can share that with our audience. So I pretty much use Sublime Photoshop probably every day. And I do a lot of prototyping in Photoshop, although that's really just a very slow process. I basically jump from balsamic InVision to Photoshop and there are obviously many other tools that can for some like in between work um, because um, balsamic is so simple and then Photoshop is so complex. But those are like some tools that I probably use every day. And that's uh, balsamic uh, markup, right? Balsamic mockup and then InVision app and then Photoshop. Yeah. But something that I recently discovered and something that's actually free in Oregon is Treehouse. I don't know if you guys use it, but they actually also have a lot of different workshops from conferences. And there's a lot of stuff that isn't beginner, but it's really like intermediate or expert. Um, And so I find it actually really fantastic for improving your skills. And then sometimes, of course, I'm trying to learn something new. So like I have to start with the beginning videos, Um, but it's really great. 
Yeah, I totally agree. I actually recently just uh, picked up a pro subscription with them um, because they have awesome content for, you know, intermediate or advanced developers. And I was trying to figure out Angular API use and it was perfect. It was like spot on for exactly what I needed. The, the depth was good, but it wasn't overwhelming. Yeah, I like it a lot. I use Evernote and I use Trello and those are kind of my tools for mapping out my day. I totally agree with Evernote. I th- Evernote for me is like a second, <laughs> yeah. a second brand. I was and, waiting for you to chime yeah. in on that. <laughs> Angela's totally heard me evangelize Evernote <laughs> well, 10 times over. I've been listening to it from my husband all these years too. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's great. I, I really, it feels like a second brain. I feel like I don't have to be as smart because I have Evernote. <laughs> but, Turns out you do. No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that's okay. Awesome. Those are some really great tools. Were there any steps along the way, especially with transitioning your career? Because I know you've, you've made some different steps where um, like you found different people or different groups, or do you use something besides just meetup.com like for, for those sort of like people to people interactions or like tips for people who are like a little shy and maybe don't know how to step out of their zone to go to a meetup or to find a mentor? After after Cisco, um, I co-founded a startup with a few people, and um, I feel like it really took. I went from becoming a coder or someone who like kind of sits in front of a computer and like does her level of coding and has goes to meetings every now and again, to someone who just kind of gets up and like interacts with people a little bit more. I basically would meet whenever I would go to different events and I would meet people I would have this little blurb about myself and my company that I would say every single time and I feel like it really kind of made me step out of my comfort zone one thing that I also learned it was it was a process and it took you know like a year a year and a half but I really learned to reach out to people to to kind of figure out who it is that I want to meet and then follow up via email if someone doesn't answer I'll like follow back a few times And I have had people take meetings after like my third email. I've even had that after like six emails. And I feel like that's something that I kind of just learned along the way um, with this whole process of doing a startup, just to kind of like decide what you need, um, decide like who you want to talk to, and then just like go for it. Be relentless. Yeah, and not take no for an answer. I mean, um, you know, people's inboxes just get crowded. So, like, send an email again. You're back at the top. Um, and then they can ignore you a few more times. But there's no reason to not try. Yeah. I like I like your tip that you wrapped in at the front there, that having a personal elevator pitch. Like, I haven't really thought about that. But especially with doing all the meetups that I do, I, I definitely do. I have a way that I introduce myself, and it's the same every time. And it definitely greases the wheels for me. It makes it so easy to just go and shake hands with someone and be like, hi, I'm Paige. This is me. You know, this is my little spiel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, like, you have to have... Um, like a short one and then you have to like really think about it because no one you can't really start telling your life story and some people do and it's just it's monotonous yeah <laughs> it's overwhelming it could yeah but it, it needs to be twitter sized yeah there you go <laughs> That's cool. yeah. yeah it's that 30 second elevator pitch actually I, I listened to a fantastic podcast about this recently um startup um by michael bloomberg Mm -hmm. doing the new um, thing but he's following his startup through and the very first podcast is all about uh, a VC guy in SF like hammering him to get that elevator pitch actually there and so if you're kind of interested in making your own personal elevator pitch maybe go ahead and check out that podcast very cool well okay so the the last question I'd love to ask for you today Katarina thank you so much this has been great Um, but is what are you fired up about right now either something that's coming down the pipe in tech or like something that's kind of keeping you up at night right now I've I've been on a learning tear, <laughs> and that's why um, that's why I mentioned Treehouse earlier. I spent some time working out of a wearable tech incubator, and that's something I'm really excited about. I feel like it's bound to start taking over. And having seen a lot of demos about like different products people are building, I'm really excited for what might be happening. Wearable tech, I, yeah, it's so so it's coming. It really it's here. It, it is coming. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be so cool so soon and it's just going to like change the way we like live our lives. I'm also really excited. I've been doing so, um, when I was younger, I used to paint and I used to have, I used to be really into calligraphy and that kind of just like at some point just like took a back seat. but I've recently been getting back into it and that's probably been one of my favorite things to do. There's um, there's a lot of cool stuff happening on the web around typography, around calligraphy, 
and it's kind of like a side project, but I'm currently working on making a font and I've just, my background is not in art. So um, it's been like a learning experience every day. Thank you for listening to this episode of Women's Tech Radio. Be sure to check out jupiterbroadcasting.com for the show notes. And there you can also subscribe to the RSS feed in iTunes. You can also email us at WTR at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Find us on Tumblr at heywtr.tumblr.com or check us out on Twitter at heywtr. Also, if you have a moment, check us out on iTunes and leave us a review for the podcast. It helps us spread the word. Thanks so much.